Hello. So today I'm continuing my series of videos on games that I own but I've only played once. And as you can see, next up is Francis Drake. I played this back in uh, 2016. And when I played it that time, I played it solo as a learning game. Thinking me and my gaming buddies were going to play it, but uh, I guess that never happened. Um, I did... Um, not remember when I opened the box. I, end, I ended up going ahead and playing this yesterday so I could do this rules overview. And I'd forgotten uh, what uh, pretty good components this game has. As you can see, um, the board's nice. It's got uh, you know these ships. Anyway, I'd forgotten uh, great components, and it actually has a pretty great insert also. Um, and I guess it was printed... Uh, in German and English because this is a two-sided board but the other side of this board is in German and these tiles uh, like this coffee the other side of it uh, if you can see is uh, German um, so a lot of the tiles there is an extra set of tiles um, for these locations that's in German but uh, anyway so it's printed in both languages and uh, so I thought that was pretty cool, and I thought the components were pretty good. Um, anyway, that just struck me when I had reopened. I had forgotten about that. But anyway, let's get to uh, how to set up and play Francis Drake. All right, well, first thing in setup, of course, is to put out the game board. It's a pretty big game board. And you put out this uh, Plymouth Harbor board, and you'll put your gray, crew, <laughs> gray cubes, which uh, represent crew, uh, black cubes which represent guns you know it kind of says that under there that they go there these purple cubes represent trade goods you got your informer your commodities coffee tobacco sugar and indigo you got these barrels that represent supplies you got your governor tile admiral tile frigate tiles troop tiles uh, pinnace um, markers and then you got these glass beads um, that represent silver, gold, and jewels. So you'll fill out that board. Then you'll uh, take the commodities uh, necessary to uh, put one on each location here for trade goods in Santiago de Cuba, Santo Domingo, and San Juan. So let me do that. Alright, so I got those tiles on the board. Well, next you shuffle up these three Spanish galleon counters, which I've already done, and then place one face up on each of the Spanish galleon spaces on the board. All right, then each player will take a ship's log, which is this uh, player board here, and it has a color, and then you take all the appropriate pieces uh, matching that color. You got your player discs, your mission disc, your score marker, your galleon and frigate, you got four cubes in your color, and then uh, you also take an investor tile. All right, then each player will place one of his uh, cubes at the top of the different types of conquest spaces here on the board. And then the other one he just places on his ship's log. And the player will take his scoring marker, and all players will put their scoring marker on this uh, number four space. They've made it big enough for all players to put their markers there. And you'll place the voyage marker on voyage one on the board. Then you'll choose a set of location tiles depending on the number of players. They're a different color for the number of players. So for I'm playing a three-player game, blue, red, and green. So I need the tiles for three players. And uh, you can tell that because they're this light blue here. The other side of these is for five players. And that's the darker blue. And... Uh, the pre-printed tiles and the other, there's another set of tiles but this is for four players they're this color so uh, playing three players you take the uh, tiles for three players and just stick them on the board you know matching um, which goes you know supplies here crew here now there's a couple 
like the crew here there there's more than one space for crew so you know like there's one space here and one space here so you have two tiles you put the ones uh for the tiles like that i think that's for the crew guns and supplies i think it is you put the ones with more um available of that item like the ones here for more crew that goes earlier on the track and the one with less goes later on the track so that would go up here so I'll go ahead and lay all these tiles out and so I've got all those three player tiles uh, laid out on the board and that's set up it's actually doesn't take very long it's pretty quick so let's get on to how to play so the game consists of three voyages voyage one two and three and each voyage has two phases you have the provisioning phase where you gather supplies um, that you're going to need on your um, voyages i guess and the second phase is the sailing phase where you actually uh, go out um, sail out and uh, attempt uh, the tasks you uh, want to try to do so the first thing in the provisioning phase is the starting order now, uh, for the first voyage of the game, you just um, mix up these three, the players' frigates, which are these smaller ships, and just in a cup or in a bag and randomly draw them out for your, uh, and that will be your starting order for the start of the game. It'll work different uh, in voyage two and three. But I just went ahead and did blue, red, green, since that's the <laughs> order I have my boards here. And for the uh, first voyage, um, in your first starting order, the player who's last gets uh, one gun. So he gets to take one black uh, cube, which represents guns, and put it on his ship log board in the gun section. Then in starting order, players will take their player discs and start placing them on these tiles. You start on this section and move up this section taking turns placing these on these circles on these tiles and um, say if you put one here then you get uh, two crew but that leaves two other spots for the other players to put but of course they'll only get one crew each so like blue will place a cube then red will place a cube then green will place a cube um, the only uh, you can place it on any of them you don't have to start with the first tile you could like, because some of these tiles only have one spot, so only one person will be able to get that. So, you know, if Blue decided he was going to go on the Queen, which lets him upgrade his uh, frigate to a galleon and also get one gun and one trade good, um, then nobody else can take that. But once you've placed your player disc on a spot, when you place your next one, it always has to be further along the street than your last one so you could never go back if you placed one here you couldn't go back and place one on one of these spaces so you got to keep that in mind when you're placing your cubes so players will take turns placing um, on these tiles until they finally decide they've had enough and then they'll move their ship to the um, outbound harbor so what do each of these tiles give you let's take a look well, this first tile, as I already talked about, the crew, the player who puts his um, player disc on this circle gets two crew, and then there's two other spots for a player to get one crew. The shipyard allows, uh, there's only one spot there, and that allows a player to upgrade his ship to a galleon and get one gun. The guns tile, of course, uh, whoever goes on that space gets two gun cubes, and each other space... Um, provides one same thing with the supplies this space provides three this two this one the queen I already talked about the tavern is for gaining crew the person and you do that by rolling a dice and gaining the amount shown the first person to place a cube here gets at plus one added to their uh, die roll where the second player to place here does not get that so if you roll three or four you get two crew if you roll five or six you get three crew if you roll or one or two you get no crew but you get your ghost ship uh, mission token which we'll talk about later Next is the Admiral. There's only space for one person on that. Whoever takes that 
takes the admiral tile and the three spin or three frigate uh, tiles here and at the end of the voyage whoever has the admiral will collect uh, one victory point for each gold that's left on the board which we'll talk about that in a bit next is the trade good spot so each player that places a player on that or a player marker on that gets one trade good which are these uh, purple tokens and those can be used uh, later at these um, spots to uh, trade for one of these commodities alright next is the governor whoever takes that will get the governor tile they'll take these uh, four troop um, tiles and they will also get at the end of the voyage for every silver left on the board they'll get one victory point and um, when we start the sailing phase they'll get to move their ship um, one space to the right if they're not already in the first slot they get to swap um, with the person to their right so it lets them move up a slot in the sailing phase All right, then we come to another crew tile again allows players to click crew then we come to uh, the Drake the Francis Drake tile now whoever um, puts a player disc on here um, it's only it's only for one player there's two spots but they're kind of connected so whoever puts a disc here has to then put their second disc there on their next turn and then they collect two crew two guns and then either um, one additional gun or one additional crew all right next you have the pinnace whoever uh, goes on the pinnace space gets to take one of these pinnace tiles and put it on their ship's log and we'll talk about what that's for here in a little bit um, finally we have another gun tile again to get guns um, the informer um, whoever takes that gets to take the informer tile and uh, one trade good and then we'll talk about in a little bit what the informer is good for All right, another supplies tile allows you to take supplies two one or one the golden hind only one person can go there and whoever takes that is allowed to use their golden hind mission disc which we'll talk about shortly and then we have the investor and if you remember uh, during setup each player um, got one investor tile so if you stop on that investor space you can only do that once per game because you only have one investor tile and once you use it you can't use it again and if you do use it if you stop on that space and spend your investor tile first you have to spend four victory points and then you can either take one crew and two guns or two guns and one crew or you can upgrade your uh, frigate to a galleon and finally uh, is the dockside space where you can put one of your markers there everybody can put one there and you can take either one supply or one gun or one crew so once a player has uh, finished um, decided he's got all the supplies or whatever he he needs instead of placing his next next disc he can take his ship and move it to the first available space in the outbound um, harbor so if the earlier you finish then the the earlier you'll, you'll be in the sailing phase um, so that's one advantage but you may not get everything that you want to get so um, again at any time you're placing discs when you think you've got what you need instead of placing your next disc you can take the first available outbound space or once you place a disc in the um, dock side then your next um, move must be to move your frigate or um, galleon to the um, first available space in the outbound All right, next you prepare for sailing so the first thing you'll do is take a silver and put uh, one on each of these towns that have the mark for a silver uh, and this is a fortress so there's two fortresses that get a silver and two towns that get a silver 
then you do the same for the gold so this is a town gets a gold you got a fortress up here that gets a gold you got a town here that gets a gold and a fortress here that gets a gold and then each of the three uh, galleons gets a jewel placed on the spot for it and then remember we said whoever took the admiral got to take these three um, frigate tokens and at this point they'll get to place them face down next to the uh, galleons there and each of them has um, either no cannons one cannon or two cannons and that makes it harder to complete that uh, mission so we should kind of talk about that for a minute before we go on so the different missions you can do are you know if you're at a town you can attack the town and like this town if it just has this um, one troop icon you have to discard one crew from your ship and then you've successfully attacked that town and get the victory points and if you're the first person up to two successful attacks can occur um, if you're the first person then you also get this jewel um, fortresses are somewhat similar but they will have a troop counter remember we said the governor will get these four group uh, troop tiles and he'll get to place so he can place one with a zero here and First, to successfully attack this, you would have to have two cannons, um, discard two cannons, and then a number of crew also. So it's, you would flip this tile over, and that would be zero plus two. So you need two crew and two cannons to successfully attack this. But the person with the governor tile, he knows what these are so he because he got to place them. So you have a zero, a one a two and a one and he'll get to place one here at this fortress one at this fortress one at this fortress and one at this fortress so that player knows what those are so that's the advantage of taking the governor tile you get to place those and you know you know which one's going to require more troops to fight well it's the same with these uh, frigate tiles whoever takes the admiral gets to place these at the three frigates and they're the similar to successfully attack these frigates you got to discard a number of cannons and when you uh, get there and flip the tile over you'll also have to discard that additional number of cannons so again you got the zero one and two and whoever took the admiral knows where he placed those so he has an advantage of knowing you know which one might be easier to attack and then the other missions are just these to get trade goods so if you have or to get commodities so when you go here you'll trade one trade good so if you had uh, gotten a trade good during the provisioning freight phase and had it here on your uh, ship's log if you have a mission here um, you can trade your trade good for one of these um, commodities at one of these spots wherever you've place your mission disc which we're about to get to so as we were saying in the prepare for sailing phase the admiral will take the frigate tiles and look at them and place them you know next to these frigates however he wants to place them then whoever took the governor tile will look at these troops and place them in one of the spots um, you know however he wants to place them again only he's the one who knows what what troop numbers he placed where everyone all the other players won't know that and then finally whoever took the governor tile gets to move so if red had taken the governor tile even though he's in third spot here he gets to shift one to the right so he would actually get to go second and green would be moved to third and again that's the governor tile that allows you to do that and then the last thing in the prepare for sailing um, phase is a player will take his last cube and he'll put that on a provision marker 
depending upon how many supplies he took during the provisioning phase. So if, uh, say, Blue Player took two supplies, um, and he had two supplies on his ship log, he took those during the provisioning phase, then he would take his blue cube and put that on the number two navigation marker. And what that means is that's as far as he can sail. So he can uh, do a mission here in the number one section, which you can see is kind of divided by this green. Or he can do a mission here in this purple number two section. He could not do any mission here in the number three or over here in the number four. So depending on how many supplies you get is how far you can sail. And um, so what when you're putting your mission discs out, which we're about to get to, um, you can only put your mission discs in the sections as far as you can sail. So again, if you took two supplies, you put your, your last cube on the navigation marker of two, and you can only do missions in this uh, green section and in this purple section. You could not do anything in the, sec the yellow section three or the red section four. All right, next would be the sail um, portion of the game. Now, each player has a number of mission discs. You normally have, you know, one, two, three, and four. You could, if you took the golden hind, if you put one of your player um, discs on the golden hind, then you get to use your uh, golden hind disc. And if at the tavern you rolled a one or two, then you also get your uh, ghost ship disc and um, the ghost ship is basically a just for bluffing you'll get to put it out but it re doesn't really do anything and the golden hind so normally when you're putting out the discs you're going to put them out in outbound order so here starting with blue he'll get to put his first mission disc so the mission that he wants to do the most um, he might want to put the the missions will be resolved in order of one two three or four and whoever's disc is in that like if more than one player wanted to do you know this mission um, to fight this town if blue put his disc here his one disc here and then green put his one disc here well whoever put theirs first will get to resolve theirs first even if they're the same number but otherwise they're they're done in number order so if if a blue put his disc one disc there and then green ended up putting his two disc here um, then they would be resolved in this order so uh, So one would get to attempt uh, blue, since he has his one there, he would get to attempt this mission first. And, of course, the bonus of attempting this mission first is if you're successful, then you get the um, silver jewel. Um, up to two players can attack a town or a um, fort or a, a galleon, but um, only the first person gets the reward of the jewel. So again, it's the mission disc number gets to resolve first in any of these spots. Um, if it's a tie, the lower mission disc goes first, but if it's a tie, then it's resolved in sailing order, which currently is blue, red, or green. Um, now again, if you got your golden hind disc um, from placing up there and you get to place that out, then that one is always always resolved first, even before the number ones. And again, the ghost ship, um, you just get to place that out kind of as a as a bluff. It won't actually uh, do anything. And again, as I said, you can only put your mission discs in sections as far as your navigation marker is. So in this, we'll just say in this example, uh, we're starting the sail phase so blue is first so he you know he might say now you don't have to put them out in in order of one two three or four you might want to you know try to trick people make them think oh, well what i really want to do is go for this fort so you know but i don't really care for that so i'm going to put my number four there 
and then next is red well um, say he really he might take his number one because he really wants to get a commodity so he'll put his one there and then you know maybe green uh, he really wants to get a commodity too so he puts his number one there and so forth so we'll say blue what he really wanted to do is uh, attack this fort so he puts his one there so anyway players take turns uh, placing out their discs um, placing them in sailing order I'll just put a few out here uh, and then after after everybody's placed all their discs then you will have a chance for the player that took the informer remember that was a spot here and if you took that you got to take the in, the informer tile well after every player has placed all their discs the informer can he can look at it, all the discs at a location where he has discs so say if green had the informer he could look at this stack and say oh there's two ones you know red has a one there and he's further ahead of me on the sailing order, so he'll get to go first. Blue put his two, so I'll get ahead of him. But he can then decide, well, I'm going to exchange. If I'm not going to do good there, I can exchange, uh, you know, my disc for one of my other discs. So he can exchange two of his discs anywhere um, where he's placed them. And actually, he doesn't even have to exchange one from the stack he looked at. He looked at that stack and that gave him some information he could maybe exchange this disc with this disc if he wants to anyway he can look at one stack of discs and then exchange any two of his discs or or the other or the other thing he can do is if he has a disc um, at some place where there's a defending troop or frigate tile like here he can look at that secretly look at that and say oh you know i'm not going to do good there um, and he can then decide to move his mission disc to any other location where he does not already have a mission disc and that is within the, you know, the navigation zone he's allowed to go to. So maybe he decides to move to here. So that's what the informer um, allows. So once the player with the informer has done the, his thing, then you'll turn the mission discs over everywhere and uh, put them in the order that they'll be resolved. So three would go ahead of four. You know, you flip these over. Um, since green and red both have a one, you'd uh, break the tie by sailing order. So red would get to go first, green would get to go second, and blue would get to go third here, here, uh, red would go second, green would go first, here there's only one, um, in this location blue would get to go first and red would get to go second, here, alright so then so you flip over all the discs and put them in the order. Now, if there was a third disc here, if maybe, uh, you know, say red had put a disc in this stack also, and so it was like this, you would leave this blue one here, even though there's only room for two successful attacks at a town fort or galleon, you'd go ahead and leave blue's uh, disc here because if red or green was not able to make a successful attack, maybe they didn't have, by the time they resolved this mission, now, since Green's that's Green's third mission, maybe um, now in this example, his first and second mission don't use crew, but maybe they did, and so he got here and he doesn't have a crew to do this, so he would end up having to remove his disc, and then Blue would have an opportunity to make the second um, successful attack there. So if there is three discs um, in one of these towns, forts, or frigates, you still leave the third disc there just in case they do have the opportunity to try to make a t attack if one of the other two people can't. So next if somebody had um, the golden hind then they would get to resolve that 
um, mission first um, before anybody else. They would do that. Then everybody takes their ship, um, they remove it, and they replace it um, with their ghost ship um, just so they uh, remember what the sailing order was. And they put their ship on their first, um, their mission disc with their number one. So Blue would do that. Red would take his ghost ship marker and put it there, and he would go on his number one, and then green would do the same, and he would do his number one, which would be here. And you would resolve then in sailing order. So blue would resolve his number one first, so his number one is here. So he would flip then flip this over, and he would need... One, he would need to be able to discard two cannons and two, three crew. Now, if he has that, then he goes ahead and um, discards those from his player mat, and then he's successful, so he would flip this disc over, and uh, he would score the three victory points, moving up the victory point track. And since he's first, he would get to take this jewel, and since that's a fort, he would then, on his... Uh, type of uh, conquest he would move his blue cube down saying he's attacked successfully attacked one fort um, this turn then each player other player does their number one so you know red would do his which would be trade a trade good for one of the, he'd get his first pick of one of these commodities and then green's number one he would trade a trade good And then he'd get to pick one of the two remaining commodities. Anyway, so that's a you'd then uh, each player would then move their uh, again. If you're successful, uh, you flip your disc over and leave it there. If you're if you can't do a mission, um, like if he had his ship here, sorry, um, and he couldn't do this because he didn't have a crew to do it. Then instead of flipping his disc over and leaving it there, he just picks it up and takes it. So if, if you are at a location where you can't complete it, you just take your disc off of there and don't complete it. But if you do successfully complete it, then you flip it over. So once everybody's done all their ones, then everybody moves to where their second disc is. Um, so let's say he successfully did that. Then he would move to his number two and blue would move to his number two and then again you'd resolve them in blue red green order um, you know outbound order so blue would then resolve his number two and so forth so that's what uh, you continue doing that until everybody's resolved all four of their missions or you can at any time after you've completed at least one mission where you've successfully attacked a town or a fort or a galleon and by the way i didn't mention this you cannot uh, attack the galleons unless um, during the provisioning phase you upgraded your frigate to a galleon. So if you just have a frigate, um, even if you put a marker on, on a galleon space, that you can't successfully attack it. Even if you have the correct amount of cannons to attack it, you can't do it. Um, you can only attack a galleon if you converted your frigate to a galleon in the provisioning phase and you can see they're a little bit bigger so if red had converted his um, frigate to a galleon during the provisioning phase he would replace it with the bigger ship so i just wanted to mention that i forgot to mention that earlier but um, back to when you're completing your missions uh, you don't have to complete them all if you don't want to uh, any time after you've completed at least one mission where you successfully attack a town, fort, or galleon on your next uh, turn instead of moving to your next mission disc you can move back to the homebound port and you'll be earlier in order then for um, well actually that won't necessarily be the play order for the next uh, voyage but the first person back if they um, successfully completed at least uh, you know one mission and came back before they completed their before they did their fourth mission disc the first person back gets two victory points and the second person back gets one victory point and again that's only if you didn't do all four of your missions and you at least successfully completed one uh, 
mission at a town, fort, or galleon. So once everybody's come back to the homebound port, they've done whatever, either all their missions or whatever missions they want to do. The next thing you do is score the voyage. So first, first part of that is you look at your types of conquests. So if you um, did say, you know, like Blue here said he successfully attacked one town and one fort. So he did two types of conquests. So for two, he would score four additional victory points. Um, red, he just successfully attacked a galleon, so that's just one. So he would get one. And if you successfully do a fort, town, and galleon, then you score uh, ten bonus points. Then the player that had the uh, admiral um, token for every gold still on the board, um, remember if you successfully complete a mission at one of these locations with a gold, then you take it. And whenever you take a jewel or a silver or a gold, you put it in your treasure chest so <clears throat> nobody can, unless they remember how much you got. And those will be worth points at the end. But whoever took the admiral for every gold uh, left on the board, they score one victory point. And whoever took the governor tile for every silver left on the board, they score one uh, bonus victory point. Then you'll reset the board for the next voyage. So all players will return any, um, all their supplies, guns, crews, um, trade goods that they did not use. I'll go back to the Plymouth Harbor board. One thing I did forget to mention, um, the pinnace tiles, you remember that's one thing you could acquire during the provisioning phase. If you have a pinnace on your ship's log, then when you attack a fort, you can ignore the guns um, at that fort and you only have to attack the troops. So you'll only have to discard crew to successfully attack the uh, fort. You can ignore the guns. So back to resetting the board. Um, Again, everybody takes all the guns, crew, um, what provisions, supplies that they have on their board, returns them. Um, all the troop counters and frigate counters, admiral token, governor token, those are all put back on the uh, um, Plymouth Harbor board. The informer token also returned to the Plymouth Harbor board. Then if your ship, if you had... Um, had your ship upgraded to a galleon previously the ships are reduced back to frigates again in the homebound dock and then they don't stay in the order in which they came home um, starting with the second voyage the order is changed to um, the player in last place will be first player in second to last place will be second and the player in first place will be third and that's uh, so you'll rearrange the ships in that order at this time and then players will take back all their mission discs um, and all the player discs that they had placed on the location tiles. And players will also retrieve their cubes from the navigation marker and put it back on their ship's log. And move the cubes back on the types of conquest back to the top there. You'll pick up the three galleon markers, you know, shuffle them, better than that hopefully, and uh, place those out again. You would replenish any of the commodities that have been taken in the previous round and then replenish any of the silver, gold, and jewels that had been taken in the previous round. And um, then you would pick up all the tiles there and shuffle them. And then for the next, the second uh, voyage and third voyage, when you do that, you put them back down randomly. So you don't put them back down according to the picture that's pre-printed on the board. You shuffle them and put them about randomly. So either second and third voyage, they'll be in different spots than they were from the first voyage. 
And then lastly, the voyage marker is moved to the uh, second voyage. And then you'll start over again um, doing the provisioning phase. Again, starting with uh, the first player here. We'll get to place his player disc uh, and so forth. So you'll do that again for the second voyage. Then you'll reset again and do that th for the third voyage. And then you'll do final scoring, which will include um, commodities are scored in final scoring. For a single commodity, you get uh, two victory points. For a set of two different ones, you get eight victory points. For a set of three different ones, you get 16 victory points. And for a set of four different commodities, you get 26 victory points. So those commodities are actually uh, one of the biggest scores for you if you can get uh, four different commodities. And then you'll reveal, you know, the jewels you have in your treasure chest and you get three points for each silver, four points for each gold, and five points for each jewel. And then uh, whoever has the highest score after that um, wins the game. And tie scores are broken by the order of the uh, homebound dock there. So why don't we just do uh, one... Uh, complete uh, round just to show how it plays and uh, then wrap it up all right I think I got the board all reset um, so again blues um, at the very first turn you randomly decide the order so um, blues first so we'll say he's going to place one of his player discs on the first crew space here and he'll get two crew so he takes two crew and puts them on the crew space of his ship's log. Okay, red is second, so uh, he decides he wants to get a crew also, so he's going to take that, and he'll get a crew and put that on his ship's log. All right, green thinks he'll get a crew later, so he's going to go ahead and skip ahead to the shipyard, which allows him to upgrade his... Um, frigate to a galleon and he gets one cannon so or, or one gun so he'll take a gun and place that on the gun section of his player mat and I remember he got one to begin with because he was the third in third place at the start now you kind of want to think ahead of what what you want to do so you determine you know how many supplies and of what you want um, so anyway, it's back to blue. He decides he's going to come here and get two cannons or two guns. So we'll take two guns from the board and put them here. All right, red is next. Uh, he wants to go ahead and skip ahead and get uh, three, take the three supply space. So he'll get three supplies. And remember, that'll let him go up as far as the third navigation marker so he'll take three supplies and he puts them on his board and green uh, he could either go here and get another cannon or go ahead and get two supplies so he's gonna do that so he takes two supplies and puts them on his board all right back to blues turn well he's gonna come to the queen and that allows him to upgrade his ship to a galleon and he gets a cannon and a trade good so he'll come over here gets one trade good and one gun and he puts those on his mat the gun goes there trade good goes there all right well red's going to come to the tavern and try to get some crew now he'll take this first space where he gets to add one to his die roll so he'll roll a die. He got a three plus one is four. So a four gives him two crew. So he puts his two crew on there. Now it's Green's turn. Well, Green decides they're going to come here to the tavern and get some crew also, but they don't get to add one to their roll. So he just rolls and he gets a four. So again, that's two crew also. So he will add two crew to his board. Alright, back to Blue's turn. Well, he'll 
go to the Admiral and remember that allows him to take the uh, Spanish frigate tiles which he'll get to place later so we'll just put those in blues area and he takes the Admiral token and puts that in his area all right well red wants to get a trade good so he's gonna go there and he will take a trade good and put it on his mat now green he'd like to get a trade good also but he doesn't want blue to get the governor and the admiral so green decides I'm gonna go ahead and get the governor so remember he takes the troop counters and the governor tile so he'll take the governor tile and the troop counters all right we're back to blues turn he could go here and get two crew but he decides he's going to go on drake so remember he'll have to put this and his next blue marker there um so for, he just puts his one there and now it's he doesn't get anything yet till he puts his second marker there but now it's red's turn so red uh he thinks he's got enough crew um He's going to take a pinnace. So he puts a marker here on the pinnace. He gets to take the pinnace marker and put that on his board. Uh, Green wants two more crew, so he'll take that spot and get himself two more crew. So he'll put those. That gives him four crew. Now it's back to blue, and remember he has to put his second marker here on Drake. But what that gives him is two crew two cannons and then a choice of another crew or another cannon so he's going to take uh, two cannons and three crew so he's got a pretty good supply of crew and cannons now so it's on to red's turn well red doesn't have any cannons so he's going to go ahead and take this spot and get two cannons or guns. I guess they're called guns. I keep saying cannons, but uh, guns. Alright, Green's turn. He'll take the Informer, which gives him a trade good, and then the Informer's power. So he'll take the Informer tile and a trade good, and he'll put that on his ship log. Now, Blue still doesn't have any supplies, so he's definitely got to get some. So He'll uh, come here and get two, two supplies. So he'll take those from the mat over here and put them. All right, Red's turn. He thinks he's uh, he doesn't need any more supplies. He's just going to go ahead and uh, go out. So he's not going to place another disc. He's going to take his ship and per put it on the first um, outbound space. Uh, green, he wants to get use his golden hind disc, so he's going to put a token on the golden hind. And so he'll take his golden hind mission disc and just put it with his other so he knows he can use it. Uh, blue figures he's done, so he's just going to take his ship and put it in the second spot. And finally, green, uh, red's already, so he can't do anything else. Um, so now green comes and he takes the third spot in the outbound. All right, the holder of the Admiral, which is blue, he gets to put out these Spanish frigate counters. So um, he thinks uh, now he can only go to zone two. Um, so he thinks he is going to want to attack a, a frigate. So he's going to want to put, he can, the only one in zone two is this one. So he's going to put his token with zero extra cannons there. And then he'll put the one with uh, one extra cannon over here in the fourth zone and the one with two extra cannons here in zone three. All right. All right. Now green has the troop counters. And so he gets to place those out. And he can go as far as zone two also. So, you know, he knows he's got two cannons and four crew. So he, uh, he thinks, well, maybe I want to attack this fort and get six points. I'm going to try to go for that. So I'm going to put the zero extra troop thing marker there. And I'll put this other. I don't think anybody, or I know nobody can go to zone four. So I'm going to put the other zero 
over there in zone four and then I'll put the uh, plus one here in zone three and the plus two here in zone two and now also because green has the governor he gets to swap one space over so he gets to move blue actually to the third spot and he gets to go into the second spot now only green and blue have galleons red still has his frigate so red could not attack any galleons uh, on his turn and finally each player will put out their navigation marker so I've got two supplies for blue so I can only go to the second navigation spot red has three supplies so he puts his on the third navigation marker and green has two supplies so he also puts his on the two navigation marker so he knows he can only do zones one or two and red can do one two or three all right now we start putting the um, mission tokens out and red gets to go first um, he's only got his one two three and four so uh, red he thinks he's gonna take his uh, mission one and uh, he wants to try to get the six points here at Cartagena so he's gonna put that there okay green is next now he has his uh, golden hind which will get to resolve first no matter where he puts it so he's gonna uh, he wants to trade his trade good um, so he's gonna put that here and now blue well blue knows he wants to attack that frigate in zone two so he's gonna take his number one and put it here on this frigate in zone two that puts us back to red so Red has a trade good, so he um, <clears throat> is going to try to get him a trade good. Um, so he'll go here also. And that takes us back to green. He hasn't used his number one yet. Um, now we know he's got quite a few crew and a few cannons, and he can go up to zone two. So eh, we'll just say maybe he wants to... Well, he got a... A galleon um, so he can attack but he can only go to zone 2 he could try to go on this one and uh, get it also it's worth six points so yeah he's gonna go there also all right so it's back to blue we know blue has a trade good so he wants to we'll just say he's gonna go ahead and go on this one um, Actually, I think I got out of order here. It should be going uh, red, green, blue. <laughs> Let's see. I've done two reds, two blues, two greens. I don't know. I got out of whack at some point. So uh, we'll just do... We'll do green's turn, but somehow I got out of order. I should have been doing red, green, blue, and I think I got out of that order. But uh, we'll say, all right, well, green, he's going to go here. Now we should do blue again because he should really be next. We'll say uh, blue, he is going to go here. Uh, red, he's going to... A red can go to zone three, so maybe he wants to do that. I don't know. We'll say, all right, he ain't going to come here to zone three. And then uh, green gets to go again. We'll just say he's going to go here. And blue's going to go again. We'll say he's going to go here. And red's last one. We'll put him here, and green's last one, we'll put him, um, well, we'll just say here, no, can't, yeah, he doesn't have one there. You can't go where you already have one. All right, so everybody's done placing. 
So now the person with the informer can uh, look at a location where he's got a disc and look at all the um, di mission discs there. And then he can exchange two of his discs. Or he can look at one of the frigate or troop counters. He's going to look at what the frigate counter is here. And he knows that's a nothing. So he would only need two cannons. Um, he'll just leave his desk there. Remember, he could um, move it to another location where he doesn't have a disc, but he's going to leave it there. All right, now we'll turn over all the mission discs and put them in order. And we know that that's going to go... The, the, um, the Golden Hind will go first. All right, we'll turn over these two. So we got two and four. That's a two. Turn over these two. We got one and four. Turn over these two. We got three and three and then they'll go in uh, outbound order so green is ahead of blue so he gets to attempt this first actually. Uh, that one's by itself. Here's two that are together. Got a one and a one. Well, green gets to go ahead of blue on that one because again he's first in the order and then uh, got a red number three and I think that's all of them turned over so then the golden hind always gets to resolve first so that's green so he gets to, um, well he can flip that disc over because he's gonna do that he does have a trade good so he's gonna put that back in there and he gets to take one of these indigo uh, there's the least of those so he's going to take an indigo and he puts that on his board all right now everybody will replace their ship with their ghost ship marker and put their ship on their number one token so let's see we'll have blue go to his number one token and green go to his number one token which is oh, <laughs> he's attacking blue all right and now we've resolved them in order which is red green blue so red does his number one first <clears throat> so he will flip this token over so he needs two cannons and two crew so he has the pinnace, so actually he doesn't need the two cannons, so he just needs two crew. So he'll discard two crew, and that scores him six points. So that will put him at ten, and he gets the jewel. Oh wait, that's the wrong one. He gets the jewel there, so he'll slip that into his thing, and since he successfully completed that, he flips his disc over. And now we go on to green's number one, which is here. So he gets to flip this over, and he sees it's no additional cannon, so he knows to defeat that he just needs to uh, remove two cannons, which he will from his bat. So that will give him six points. So that will put him up at 10 also. And he gets this jewel. And again, he slips that into his treasure chest. And now he flips this over. He successfully completed it. And now blue, he can uh, do this one also. But again, since he's second, he won't get the jewel. But he does have to discard two guns off of his sheet. And then he also gets six points. So they are all at the 10. Kind of hard to fit them all on there. Okay, now they all sail to their number two disc. And resolve in order again. Red, green, blue. So red goes first. He's going to trade a trade good for one of those remaining... Thing. So he takes one trade good off of his 
mat and he decides he'll take the coffee and puts that on his mat. Alright, green is here. He just needs one troop, which he has, so he'll flip that over. Uh, discard his one uh, crew and that will score him one point but since he's first he also gets this treasure so he'll slip that in his treasure and score himself one point he's at 11 and finally blue he's here he's got to discard a trade good and he'll take this sugar And he puts that on his mat. Alright, everybody goes to their third disc. Red. Green. And, uh, wait a minute. Oh, I just forgot to flip this over when Blue did this. Alright, so he's going to his third, which, again, he's competing with Green. All right, well, red's first. He flips this over, so he needs two crew. He doesn't need the two cannons, again, because he has the pinnace. Otherwise, he wouldn't need the two cannons and the two crew. He just needs the two crew. Unfortunately, he's only got one crew, so he cannot complete this. So he just takes this disc off and puts it back in his play area, and he gets nothing for that. All right, green is next. He's at this town. Um, actually, I've been forgetting to do something. Uh, green and uh, blue both did a galleon, and uh, green also did a town. Uh, red did a fort, so I forgot to do that. All right, now I think we're all set back. Okay, <clears throat> now green is attacking this town. He just needs one crew which he has, so he discards that crew. That's going to give him two points. And again, he gets this jewel. And he slides that into his thing. And flips this over. And blue gets to do it also. He won't get the jewel, but he just needs one troop, or one crew, which he has. And then he'll flip that over, and that gives him two points also. Alright, so now everybody would go to their fourth disc, but Red <coughs> says, well, I've only got one crew, and if this has um, a two on it, I'm not going to be able to do that. So I'd rather go back early to the homebound port point <clears throat> homebound port and score the two victory points for coming in early so as long as I've done at least one successful successful mission which I did here at Cartagena so he's gonna just go back early and not do his fourth uh, mission so he's gonna take the first spot and he scores two points so that puts him at 12 there um, and then he just takes his uh, fourth disc back so we come to um, green's going to sail to his fourth and blue's going to sail to his fourth. So green is next. He uh, just needs two cannons. Oh, oh crap, which he doesn't have. He didn't think of that. So eh, unfortunately he can't do that. He should have gone on back, but he didn't. And I come to blue's fourth one. He just needs one troop or one crew, I keep saying troops, crew, he gets that, which is going to score him one point. So he'll be at 13, and red's at 12, and uh, so he's successful there. All right, that is uh, everybody's um, completed all their discs, so now red's already home, so green's next, he sells home, but because he completed his fourth disc, he doesn't get that one victory point. And then finally, Blue sails home in third. Oh, and I forgot, Blue, he did uh, successfully attack this town, so he needed to move his thing down to town. 
All right, so then we score the void. So first we do these. So blue did um, two different types of conquest, so that's four points. Red just did one type of conquest, the fort, so he just gets one point. And green only did two types of conquest, so he gets four points. All right, then the holder of the admiral gets one point for each unclaimed gold, which none of them were claimed, so he gets four points. And the holder of the governor gets one point for each unclaimed silver, and there's only one unclaimed silver, so he just gets one point. Alright, so now we reset the board so everybody returns any unused uh, crew, cannons, and supplies back to the board. So he had a lot, obviously, he didn't plan his missions too well because he had a lot of unused crew and cannons and supplies. So I guess I wasn't thinking that over too well. Alright, and then people put back their informer, governor, and uh, admiral tokens. Put back your pinnace tokens and um, collect all the frigate and uh, Spanish troop markers and put them back in their locations here. Green and blue have to reduce their ships to uh, frigates again. And then we would reset them in order of score, but they're already set that way. Red's in last place, so he would go first. Green's in second place, so he goes second. And blue's in first place, so he would go last. So it just so happens they're in the right order. If they weren't, um, you would put them in that order. All right, then players take back their playing discs and mission discs and put them back in their play area. The cubes are reset here in the types of conquest. Move back to the top row. Take your cubes back from your navigation markers. And then you'll pick up the frigates, shuffle them, or the uh, Spanish galleons, shuffle them and put them back down. Hopefully shuffle them better than that, but then you pick up all the locations discs, shuffle them, and then put them out in a random order. Let me do that off camera. All right, so you'll see this time these uh, tiles are laid out in a completely different order than they were um, the first round. Then you replenish the treasure, so we put a silver on each of these that was taken and then replenish the jewel there none of the gold got taken so that replenishes all the treasures replenish the commodities so we need a sugar there a coffee there and an indigo there and finally the voyage marker is moved to a voyage 2 and then again, we would start uh, the next round with the um, provision phase where Red would start putting his player discs and so on. And that's how it goes. And then you do the same thing for the uh, third voyage. Of course, at the end of the third voyage, you don't have to reset the board because there's not going to be another voyage. Um, then you do the final scoring, which I talked about, where you get a uh, score based on your commodities, your sets of commodities and uh, scores based on the jewels you have in your treasure chest added to your, your, the score you already have on the board and whoever has the sc higher score wins Francis Drake so uh, that's it um, I think it's a pretty fun game you know when I played it uh, yesterday solo again it's not a good game for playing solo because you know what mission disc you're putting where and you know what all the frigate and troop counters are so uh, definitely not meant to play solo, but I still had a, I still had fun playing it solo. Um, just trying to do my best for each person that I could. Um, so this is another one. I say this a lot of times, but this is another one that I'd really like to play with some of my gaming buddies one of these days. 
it's pretty quick actually it's got some good strategy i think and a pretty quick game so uh yeah it's one it's one that i definitely like and want to play again so uh thanks for watching and i hope you enjoyed it